it's Cupcake Kami Summer back here and welcome to another video. This one will continue what we've started before with the advanced coordinating series, I guess. There will be more, so I guess this counts as a series. And this one will go a little bit deeper into some of the not as obvious tips, tricks, ideas, things to consider. If you haven't seen the first one, which is all about hair and makeup, then I'll link it up here. However, these are intended to be self-contained. You don't necessarily have to watch them all or have to watch them in any particular order. You can watch just the one that you find the most interesting. But if you want maximum tips, by all means. And before we crack on with that, if you want to make sure that you don't miss when I upload the next advanced coordinating video or any other video for that matter, make sure to subscribe and click the bell button next to it because even I don't know when that will be. I'll try and have some sort of regularity but I make no promises. When I said let's get deeper into it, the pun was fully intended because for this video, I'd like to talk about depth in a coordinate. What is it, how to create it, and how does it affect how the coordinate comes across. When I think about the coordinates that I like and that I find memorable, and the ones that really appeal to me versus the ones that are not necessarily bad or not even ones that I don't like, just ones that are okay, but I don't remember them. Oftentimes, it boils down to whether there's any depth to a coordinate or not. An interesting coordinate that keeps your attention will keep giving. The more you look at it, the more layers of detail, the more new things you'll notice about it, and it will take you a while before you feel like you've truly seen everything there is to that coordinate. Think about it the same way as you consider drawings and art. A line art, however beautiful and however amazing in its own right, will pretty much always pale in comparison to the finished art piece where you have colour, shadows, highlights, textures, details, all of those little pieces that come together to make the finished thing. Lolita dresses are very much the same, which by now I'm sure you've noticed. Prints will have details and elements that you haven't noticed at all when you first got them, that may have taken you years to notice that this particular thing was even part of the print. Solid, non-printed pieces usually make up for that by having structural details. Things like pin tocks, ruffles, gathers, pleats, little elements such as a bow here, or embroidery, or flowers, different kinds of lace. This is why we love this fashion, because we look at each garment and see not only the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it, but because there's always something new to them. Even brands whose signature look is by definition simple for Lolita, because Lolita's not simple, <laughs> such as Innocent World or Victorian Maiden, they may not have such an overload of detail, but those pieces certainly do not lack depth in and of themselves because the designers have considered carefully what kind of details those pieces need to have and make them exquisitely and make sure that every element that they do add is there for a reason and does add something to the piece rather than slapping on a bow because Lolita in it. The tricky thing with depth within coordinates is that whilst it is relatively easy to explain and to understand in theory, just as you understand that a completed art piece drawing does have more depth than the line art does, it's easy to comprehend that in theory but to go from here to applying it successfully is a significant step. I'm not necessarily saying that it's a difficult step but it's one that will require conscious 
collective effort on your part as the person creating the coordinate. It is difficult for newbies to achieve because it requires two things. For one, you need to have a skilled eye for Lolita, which some newbies do have because there are certain elements from other kinds of fashion that will help you in building Lolita coordinates, such as looking out for quality, colour balance, things like this. But the second thing is it requires having the right pieces. And when you're only starting out, you will be limited with what you can use. This isn't to say that you have to have a massive wardrobe and have to have tons of things, but even saving up to get the right piece takes time. And then it needs to arrive to you from wherever it's been shipped, which takes time. This is also the reason why sometimes the full set only coordinates even though they're not bad by any means, can end up looking a little bit flat if there's nothing else to them. And I have seen more and more newbie Lolitas be lucky enough to join the fashion and have a full set as their first coordinate. And it's great because it sets them on a path of having the right base. But that in and of itself won't necessarily make for a memorable coordinate or won't necessarily have the depth to make it more interesting, especially if it's a popular set that everyone has and everyone's worn it. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's all about how you take that upper level and how do you make it distinct from all the other full sets. To use an example, let's look at Angelic Pretty's Noble Collection. When you look at the promotional picture for that set, as modelled by Risa Nakamura. It's not bad, and obviously as a promotional photograph, its aim is to market the piece and sell you the garment, but it's not a unique or exciting coordinate. Compare it with the photograph from a photo shoot that was published in Spoons magazine, and I believe this is modelled by Tina Tamashiro. Although both of those are using the OP, which arguably gives you the least versatility and the least room for changing things up, the one from Spoons magazine has a little bit more depth to it as they have used a couple of more accessories, hair and makeup styling are a little bit more deliberate rather than generic to, to not interfere with the garment being marketed and showcased in its best light. Both of those are simple outfits leading towards casual, not least due to the fact that they are using an OP. But the one from the Spoons magazine, by virtue of having those extra couple of pieces and a more deliberate styling, ends up having more depth and holds your attention for that little bit longer. It will take you ever so slightly longer before you feel like I've seen everything there is to this coordinate. Whereas with the promotional one that was posted on Angelic Pretty's website, you look at it and almost at first glance you have seen everything there is to it. What I think are key elements that help create depth within a coordinate are texture and layers. Sometimes the texture will come from the layers, but you can have the two exist completely separately and independently of each other. What's more, texture and layers aren't necessarily restricted to just clothing or just fabrics. Anything that will be on you whilst wearing the outfit, or anything that will be laid out as part of the flat lay, because those will apply to that as well, can be considered your textures and your layers, your accessories, your nails, your hair and makeup, which again, I encourage you to check out the previous advanced coordinating video for more tips specific to that. Literally anything that will be on you, that will be part of the complete outfit, could be considered your layers or your textures and will add depth to the outfit. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that because of this, depth within coordinates is restricted to only OTT outfits. That is not true. You can have simpler outfits that are full of depth, you can have casual outfits that are full of depth. If you don't believe me, look up old school street snaps from Gothic Lady to Bible, Kidder or Fruits. 
because of what Lolita fashion was like at that time, you won't find anything remotely OTT by today's standards. Yet none of the outfits featured there, none of the street snaps that we hold as iconic now and that are widely recognisable, would be considered flat. There is plenty of depth to those outfits, to those coordinates, and a lot of it is due to texture, to layers, and very careful consideration to how the overall look will come together. So let's start with textures, because I think that concept is ever so slightly easier to apply to all kinds of styling within the Lolita, from OTT to casual. As I've already mentioned, solid, non-printed pieces are fantastic for that, because they will already include plenty of texture within themselves. As I said, lace, ruffles, gathers, cutouts, mixing fabrics of different weights, mixing different types of lace. All of this, despite not being an illustration like a print is, creates plenty of visual interest, as well as suggest tactile sensation, as in you look at Pintox and you can feel, you can imagine what they feel like to touch. If you're going for more elaborate OTT styling, then you would take whatever piece you're using and build on top of that. Adding socks with a woven design, picking jewellery either specifically to match, for example, something with filigree, or to contrast, like having smooth pearls against textured fabrics and layers. Adding more lace elements from as small as wrist cuffs to as big and significant as underskirts, for example. Styling your hair to be textured, whether that's curling it or adding texture to the hairstyle externally, like adding ribbons to bubble braids. On the other hand, if you're going for simpler or more casual styling, you would focus on just one or two kinds of texture and try and highlight those, make those not necessarily a feature point, but make them noticeable. Generally speaking, in those cases, your biggest texture would come from your main piece. And then you could add maybe one or two more. For example, a handbag and a hat, or jewelry and socks whatever it is that you were going for but picking some things and paying a lot of attention to what is it that you're adding and is it adding anything to the coordinates is it filling up space or is it a feature in itself once you finally notice it whichever kind of styling you go for play around with it until you are happy Remembering that balance in Lolita is key. In the same way as you balance colours, remember to balance your textures so that each section of an outfit, roughly divided into head, torso, skirt and legs, has something of interest. Or that at least two of those, besides the main piece, have something of interest. So that when you look at the complete look, the eye travels all around the coordinates instead of just capturing the main piece, glancing peripherally at the rest and moving on because there was nothing to catch that attention and keep it there. Whew, I've rambled quite a bit about that, but hopefully it made sense. And hopefully the comparison that I'll show you now will make even more sense and will let you see what is it that I'm trying to get at. I was looking through my recent coordinates, recent as in 2020, to find some good examples to use that showcase how having texture takes the coordinate to that next level. And it took me a while to find somewhere this was shown well without the outfit being OTT. It's easy to apply adding textures and creating depth in a coordinate when your styling is over the top because there is no such thing as too much in OTT. Whereas put too much into a casual coordinate and it stops being casual. As I said, it's not that it's impossible to have simpler coordinates that are full of depth. It's more so that what I do tends to be one-off. 
it's not very often that I have corners that I would consider simple or I would consider casual where they still have plenty of interest in them and where I can look back on them and think I forgot that this detail was there however I have found some examples and all of these are using the sailor tiered skirt from metamorphose which means that we're excluding OTT as such entirely <laughs> starting with this coordinate from June 2020 it's not a coordinate that I'm unhappy with I still look back at it and like what I did there but I also realized that it's not a coordinate that holds your attention for a long time you look at it and basically what you see is what you get it was perfectly acceptable for the occasion and for the weather and whilst there are some textures in there they don't come across very well on the photograph for example the ankle socks were actually crocheted but that doesn't read very well on a photograph but moreover just that one bit of texture isn't quite enough to compensate for the two big blocks of smoothness which are the kotsu and the skirt granted the skirt is tiered so there is a little bit of texture there but it's not particularly highlighted in here it's not the key focus here and paired with a kotsu where the entirety of the thing bar collar most of which is at the back is smooth doesn't help in adding any texture and the next coordinate i think is a good example of how you can keep styling simple and even quite similar to to this one without losing interest and whilst still having depth this one is from july 2018 and whilst again the picture itself isn't the best at showcasing what was going on in the coordinate you can immediately see the difference between the two although they are styled very similarly you know it's all white with pop of a singular color they both use ankle socks hair is up the only difference being whether there is a fringe or not they're both short sleeved the difference is immediate firstly because the blouse in this 2018 coordinate in itself has tons of textures which you can make out in the photograph if it's not quite coming across on the video then the same pictures will are used as examples in a blog post version of this post so do check that out for higher resolution photographs but you can just about make out that there are decorations surrounding the full sharing of the blouse there's some gathers there's lace the sleeves are more poofy there's lace around the collar there are little ribbon ties there's already interest there and already texture there which in itself makes the skirt's texture pop up a little bit more it's still the exact same skirt but by being paired with a textured blouse versus a smooth kotsu it ends up looking ever so slightly different then on top of this the ankle socks have a visible ruffle around the edge which almost mimics the ruffling around the skirt there's the additional texture of the lace wrist cuffs and the hair by trying to mimic a hime cut adds some depth to it as well versus a smooth pulled back ponytail now in both of those cases there are extra pops of color through shoes in this one also by bag and some jewelry but in the 2018 one not only are the pops of color more evenly distributed or at least easier to identify straight away because there's nothing hidden at the back it's also that despite there being very few accessories each one of them is deliberately picked nothing there is coincidental and each one of them is also adding a little bit of texture to the coordinates whilst that texture is in turn smooth to contrast with the heavily textured blouse and the tiered ruffled skirt it is a contrast to those and the two end up complementing each other and finally let's compare that with the last chord which is from July 2020 whilst no OTT by any stretch of imagination you can't consider that casual <laughs> I mean it's somewhat casual for me somewhat but I also wouldn't feel out of place wearing that to a meetup and this coordinate takes textures further in making sure that textures are the highlight of the coordinate so the top which again the photograph's not the best at showing that but the top itself is textured throughout there are like little dots of fabric all throughout the semi-sheer layer well semi-sheer 
shit. <laughs> but also the top has layers of lace at the bottom, which instead of tucking into the skirt, I've left out and they blend almost into the tears of the skirt itself. And then I've highlighted that further by using a pearl belt, which not only creates visual separation between torso and skirt, which for someone with an hourglass shape like me, accentuating waist is always a good idea. But it also breaks up the texture of saying pearls and now tears of lace first and then the cotton skirt. The semi-sheer tights in that coordinate both mimic the sheerness of the blouse but also add a new dimension to it by being a different kind of pattern and a different kind of sheer. On my head there's a gross grain head bow as well as my hair was somewhat curled slash wavy which added some texture in there and then the pearly shine on the shoes is almost mimicked in the various pearl jewellery and then the necklace and the brooch on top of a blouse break up that block of pinkish space. As I said, it's not an OTT corner by any stretch of imagination because the pieces themselves are still relatively on the simpler side. But compared to the other two, it reads as having a lot more depth because there's a lot more attention paid to textures as well as layers, which we'll get on to now. Once more, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that layers is exclusively a domain of OTT and more elaborate coordinates when that is completely not true. Once again, using old school coordinates and street snaps as an example, whilst textures were used more commonly to create interest and depth within outfits, mostly because that's the kind of Lolita that was around at the time, we still have some great iconic examples using layers, whether that's scarves, whether that's jackets and blazers, whether that's layering socks over tights. There are things there. Remember that layers also don't have to be restricted to just clothing and fabrics. You can layer accessories. You can layer socks over tights. You can layer hair over the garment in a very specific, deliberate way. You can layer colours and patterns within the corner itself. As soon as you change how you think about layers, from physical layers of fabric to layers of interest within an outfit, whether that interest comes from texture, from patterns, from other kinds of pieces. Anything can become a layer. Your bag can become a layer. Your necklaces can become a layer. Your hair and makeup can become a layer. To me, this is such a big reason as to why I love builder pieces, particularly blouses and legwear, so much. Not only they're fantastic within their own rights, but they allow you to create coordinates that are very varied and distinct. You can layer them with each other. You can layer them over things, under things, mix and match. As soon as you'll learn and encode in your brain that blouses and socks and hair accessories are exciting too and start investing in those and find joy in them, I think that in itself will take your coordinates to the next level. So PSA, don't skimp on buying builder pieces so i'm not here to preach i'm here to talk about creating depth within a coordinate and how layers contribute to that for anyone who's known me for more than a minute and anyone who's looked at more than one of my outfits you will probably know that i love a layer i guess what i'm wearing today is a great example considering how i have two underskirts and overskirt and i'm layering the blouse over a dress as well as a necklace over a blouse but as i said it's not restricted to just ott coordinates because i'm aiming the advanced coordinating series more at the intermediate liters i want to use examples here that will not fall into the trap of this is bad this is good i'm hoping that the people who will get the most out of it will already have not only at least one coordinate that they're happy with but also that they will understand how using something or not using something makes a difference not a good versus bad difference 
but a layered versus non-layered, a textured versus non-textured, a look that's more flat versus one with more depth. They don't have to be bad, they don't have to be eta coordinates, they will just be different. And once again, I've not so much hit a roadblock, but it took me a while to find examples that I was happy to use because when I layer, it tends to lean into the OTT and I want to showcase how this can be done in casual ways as well as avoid using an example for my simpler look that's completely flat. I've settled on using another skirt example. This turns out to be a skirt heavy <laughs> instalment. This one's here is from July 2020. Whilst you could argue that instead of layering pieces or layering textures, this one is layering colours, it's not really the case. This one is just following your standard colour balance rules, guidelines for adding a colour to a coordinate. It's not a bad outfit by any means. There are some textures within them, mostly coming from skirt and a little bit on the blouse. But everything is kept very simple. There are some patterns. There's a tiny bit of layering with my hair being over my blouse. But the overall outfit is simple. Elegant, but simple. That was the design and that was the intention. Now compare this with the 10th around your wardrobe in 30 coordinates challenge outfit. At a glance, this is just a block of white with a couple of other colours. But the more you look at it, the more layers you're able to peel and see how each layer adds tons of interest and tons of depth into the coordinate. So not only are we starting with a skirt that has tiers of different laces, then we have a sheer blouse with its own kinds of laces around the neckline and sleeves. And then on top of that, there's an overdress with plenty of gathers made out of mesh, which adds another texture on it with its own kinds of lace. That's just three layers that we've already peeled that are creating so much visual interest and depth in that central part of the coordinate. Then we have further layers on top of this in the form of a belt and in the form of a flower clip on top of that belt. When you look at the hair, the head pieces are stacked or layered, however you want to call it. So there's the central headpiece in the form of that kokoshnik, and then there's a feather behind it and a Venetian mask in front of it, layering hair accessories on the head. There's two layers of pearl necklaces, whilst at a glance, the legs might look quite bare. When you check out the video, you'll see that these are actually seen stockings. So you could argue that it's a sheer layer with a solid one on top of it in the form of that seam. This is a coordinate that you can keep looking and it will take you a while before you've truly captured and noted every detail that's in there. As opposed to this one where what you see is what you get. We've already established that creating depth in a coordinate is not something that a new Lolita will be able to achieve straight away. And unlike hair and makeup, which mostly just requires a bit of thought and practice, creating depth requires thought, practice and the right pieces, which in turn take time before you get there. But what I think makes this a great learning curve for intermediate Lolitas is that you can see tangible progress and tangible difference with each piece that you add. So going back to my full set example, as soon as you add a little bit of jewellery or some wrist cuffs, that's a new layer, that's some new textures that are already spicing up your base. You can then add a bolero on top of that and boom! That's another layer and another bit of texture that breaks things up and makes them more interesting and holds attention for a bit longer. You can then go back to the hair and makeup video for some tips and try out different looks to see how it looks with bubble braids and how it looks with straight hair and how it looks with curled hair. You can then switch up to a different pair of tights or socks, some of which might be flat and printed, some of which might be woven and adding different kinds of texture. With each piece, you are measuring and seeing your progress. 
and whilst depending on how cohesive you want your wardrobe to be and how wildly your preferences for styles vary it may take that little bit extra thought and a little bit extra planning and preparation and thinking about it before you get everything to the same level but once you realize what you're now able to do compared to where you started you'll have every reason to be proud of yourself and you'll you'll be grateful to yourself for putting that effort in last time i've also given you another example of a lolita to look at and i'll do the same now and the one I'd like to highlight is on Instagram as at Palairwoods. Of course, <laughs> if you know me, I do have a weakness for classic Lolita. I do have a weakness for vintage styling and that sort of look. So it's an example that coming from me, you're like, oh yeah, of course you'd give that. She tends to wear classic, a little bit of gothic, not a lot of sweet, but there are some sweet color palettes like pink and white as well as a genuinely a load of vintage and historical inspired fashions. What I particularly think makes her a great example to at least look at once is when she does wear Lolita, almost all of her pieces are body line. Yet looking at her coordinates, even if you notice that this is a body line piece, you immediately notice how differently it looks styled by her versus what you normally see done with it. Moreover, she is an absolutely skillful master of layering and using textures, most of which come from off-brand and vintage pieces. Of course, if you are only just starting to dip your toes into trying to create depth in the coordinate, going for vintage and off-brand pieces is setting yourself up for a much steeper learning curve that you might be ready for. So if you want to have a gentler introduction, do stick to things that are made specifically for Lolita's, for Lolita fashion by Lolita fashion brands, because it will just be easier. Having said this, whether you want to aspire to a similar look as Polaire Woods, or whether you are on a very, very tight budget, as long as you're committed to putting in a lot of effort, a lot of patience, a lot of time to find the right piece whilst going charity shopping or searching for bargains on eBay or whatever, to make sure that you're adding things that are good quality, high quality, and things that will work with Lolita, and things that you do want to keep, it will be worth it, but you can't just go for any old thing or any first thing that you spot and think that might work. As I said, even though Polaire Woods is very much in the realm of classic with a bit of gothic Lolita, I think everyone can pick something up from her, even if it's just one outfit that you kind of like, just by looking at it and deconstructing it, peeling all those layers away, seeing how she's tucked things in, how she's used certain pieces like belts or jewelry how she's balancing colors and adding textures and all this there's plenty to be learned from that but of course as i said in the first advanced coordinating video these are intended for you to hear my point of view and hear my opinions and then look at the coordinates that you like whether they be yours or whether they be someone else's through that lens to now look at a corner of someone you admire and see is it that I like it because it has lots of depth created through textures and or layers and if so how is it that they've done it zoom in pick up on the details figure out whether there's any tips or tricks that you can apply to your own style and your own coordinates and then once you've done that see whether it has made the difference that you were hoping for and trust me, a lot of the times, it can be the smallest things that can make a difference. It can just be seeing how someone else adds clips around a head bow. Or it can just be noticing how someone, how someone matches the fabrics of their blouses to their JSKs. Or how they use contrasting fabrics. Whatever it is, when you're an intermediate lead to build in on top of the base that you already have, the tiniest things can make the biggest difference. Which is what makes these advanced 
coordinating. So on that note, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it has been useful. I hope that you picked something up, however little or however big, and that I was able to make my points clear either through what I said or through the visual examples that I've used. If you have liked this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video itself. I'm always curious to hear what you think. I'm always listening to what you're suggesting. If there are any aspects of advanced coordinating that you'd like me to touch on, do mention it in the comments. I'll see what I can do. Maybe some of it is already on my to-do list. Maybe some of it is not. If you'd like to encourage me to make sure that this series goes on and that I at least finish the ideas that I've had written down, then you can either buy me a cup of coffee or you can join my Patreon where the $1 a month tier will get you early access to every single blog post that I upload and the $2 a month will give you early access to all the videos that I do. So if you want to get those advanced coordinating tips one week before everyone else does, the $2 a month tier is the right one for you. And as always, I encourage all of you to check out my blog, which is Cupcakes and Unicorns, where you'll find more Lolita content. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.